Both celiac disease and Crohn's disease are chronic inflammatory conditions of the gastrointestinal tract. While symptoms can be similar, these two autoimmune diseases have different causes, triggers, treatment, and nutritional recommendations. Hi, I'm Danielle, and I'm a virtual IBD dietitian. This YouTube video is for you if you'd like to learn the key differences and similarities between the conditions. So let's dive into how these two diseases can impact your health and how your food choices play a role. First of all though, what is Crohn's disease? More than half a million people in the US are estimated to have Crohn's disease. Crohn's is a type of inflammatory bowel disease, commonly abbreviated as IBD. Crohn's disease can affect any part of the GI tract from mouth to anus, but most commonly affects the end of the small intestine known as the ileum and the beginning of the colon. An inflammation of the intestine can skip or leave normal areas in between patches of diseased intestine, and it can also affect the entire thickness of the bowel wall. No one factor has been identified as causing Crohn's disease. Rather, researchers have identified at least four factors that may contribute to developing the condition. Genetics, the gut microbiome, the immune system, and an environmental trigger. Food triggers are a common concern for many people with Crohn's disease, as certain foods may be more likely to cause inflammation, flare-ups, and symptoms for some people. While there are some more common food triggers for people with Crohn's, different foods appear to affect different guts differently with this condition. Now, what is celiac disease? Two million people in the US are estimated to have celiac disease. It's a different gut autoimmune disease where eating foods that contain gluten, the protein found in wheat, rye, and barley, cause a person's own immune system to attack and damage the small intestine. These attacks can cause symptoms like cramping and diarrhea, but damage to the small intestine can also disrupt a person's ability to absorb nutrients from food. Crohn's and celiac disease have similar symptoms. Here are some examples of overlapping symptoms between the two diseases. Abdominal pain, anemia, diarrhea, fatigue, fever, joint or muscle pain, nausea or vomiting, rectal bleeding, short stature, and weight loss. These similar symptoms can mean it can be difficult to tell the conditions apart without diagnostic testing. So to confirm a diagnosis of really either disease, a medical doctor will likely order blood tests, a biopsy, endoscopy, and other tests. Is it possible to have both celiac and Crohn's disease? Even with some conflicting data, most studies conclude that celiac disease is more common in IBD patients. Interestingly, researchers believe the prevalence of Crohn's disease with celiac is higher than ulcerative colitis with celiac. Conversely, a meta-analysis published in 2020 in the journal Gastroenterology, which involved more than 60 individual research studies, showed that people with celiac disease are almost 10 times as likely to have IBD, including Crohn's and UC, compared to people who don't have celiac. With this increased prevalence and many similar symptoms, some researchers suggest that patients over the age of 40 who are anemic or have chronic diarrhea or are diagnosed with celiac disease should also have a colonoscopy to test for IBD. Still, even though Crohn's and celiac may be related, having one condition doesn't mean you'll automatically develop the other. Can celiac disease be mistaken for Crohn's disease? Because similar symptoms like abdominal pain and diarrhea may be present in both diseases, telling the difference between Crohn's and celiac can really be difficult. That's why medical doctors often use blood tests, endoscopies, and or biopsies to determine which disease is present. Please note, it's really important not to start a gluten-free diet before completing these tests. Otherwise, some of the labs may come back normal and you won't receive a proper diagnosis. So let's talk about a celiac versus a Crohn's diet. 
If the diagnosis is celiac disease, treatment involves staying on a gluten-free diet. Gluten-free nutrition therapy will allow the intestine to heal. It will also help prevent complications like bone disease that can happen if celiac disease goes untreated. A person with celiac should carefully read all food labels and ingredient lists to see if a food contains wheat, rye, or barley. Sometimes these grain sources may be obvious, sometimes it's a little bit harder to tell. Let's switch gears to a Crohn's disease diet. Unlike celiac disease, eating gluten does not cause inflammation in all people with Crohn's disease. However, depending on the individual, certain foods can worsen symptoms. According to a study published in the journal Inflammatory Bowel Disease, almost 20% of people with IBD have tried a gluten-free diet, and 65% of those found a subjective benefit for their GI symptoms. If you have Crohn's disease, you might not be able to digest all the food you eat, so you may need additional vitamins and minerals. Your medications might also affect your ability to eat and how your body absorbs nutrients. How much fiber you should eat depends on your symptoms, the amount of inflammation in your intestines, and if you're taking medications like prednisone or budesonide. And it's also important to eat enough protein while you're on any kind of an IBD diet. If you have celiac disease, keep these nutritional recommendations in mind. It's important for you to get enough B vitamins, iron, and fiber. Choose whole grain, gluten-free products whenever possible, like whole grain corn, rice, millet, teff, or sorghum. Choose enriched gluten-free products instead of refined, unenriched products whenever possible. There are many companies that produce these types of products. Eat more foods made with alternative plant foods, such as amaranth, quinoa, and buckwheat. These plant food sources are good sources of fiber and iron, as well as some of those B vitamins. So let's switch gears to some diet tips for Crohn's disease. No one diet has been shown to work for everyone with Crohn's disease, but here are some general Crohn's diet tips to consider. Eat small meals or snacks every three or four hours. Don't skip meals. When you're flaring, Foods that are lower in fiber may be better tolerated, but when you're feeling better, your healthcare provider may recommend that you begin incorporating foods with fiber again, like whole grains and a variety of fruits and veggies into the diet. Eat a protein food or dairy product at every meal or snack if your body can tolerate it. My husband with Crohn's, he can't tolerate any dairy products because he is very lactose intolerant. But if you're able to incorporate those foods, they are recommended. Drink a lot of fluids, at least eight cups a day. Limit caffeinated beverages, sugary drinks, and beverages made with sugar substitutes like sucralose, asulfame, potassium, and more. Eat foods that have probiotics like yogurt and kefir and prebiotics like bananas. If you're considering taking any kind of a supplement, a vitamin, a mineral, a probiotic, a prebiotic, any type of a supplement you're thinking about, make sure to talk to your healthcare provider before starting it. The reason why is twofold. One, we don't want you to waste your money on something that you don't need. And two, we don't want you to do anything that could be detrimental to your health. So better be safe than sorry, just ask. So that was a lot of information. Let's talk about the three take-home messages between Crohn's versus celiac. Crohn's disease and celiac disease are two chronic inflammatory conditions. The difference in symptoms is often not significant enough to tell the difference between the two diseases. While similar in symptoms, they have different causes, triggers, diagnostic criteria, and nutritional recommendations. Speak to your healthcare team if you experience symptoms of Crohn's or celiac for formal diagnosis so that you can receive appropriate treatment and nutritional recommendations. Did you find this YouTube video helpful? If so, please let us know by liking it and subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thanks.